Phlebotomy, Lesson 1.3, Role of the Phlebotomist. What is a phlebotomist? Most people think of the actual blood collection procedure, or venipuncture, when they think about phlebotomists. But there's much more that phlebotomists are responsible for. So what are some things that phlebotomists do? Well, certainly phlebotomists draw blood. But they also have to know how the circulatory system works, the various components of blood, what veins they can use, where those veins are located, what tubes to use for what tests, what additives are in each tube, how to prepare those tubes, how to document the draw, what departments the tubes go to, other specimens that might be collected, how to perform a capillary puncture, when capillary punctures are indicated, and have a general understanding of the basic blood tests that are commonly ordered. Wow, we have a lot to cover. Phlebotomists must gain all of this knowledge during their training. Most students are apprehensive over the actual blood drawing technique. While challenging at first, this is a simple, repetitive task that is quickly mastered for most students. We will be covering the venipuncture technique later in the course. However difficult venipuncture techniques seem, they are nothing compared to all the theory that must be mastered by the student prior to learning the actual act of venipuncture. Because phlebotomists don't just draw blood, they must master all the aspects of venipuncture, including knowing what to do before, during, and after the procedure, and what to do in the event that things don't go as planned. That's what we will focus on in the online portion of this program. Every job has a job description that lists the specific tasks that the position requires. Phlebotomy is no exception. The following slides indicate specific actions that phlebotomists should be able to accomplish in order to perform their job adequately. Each facility and setting may have slightly different requirements, but these are general knowledge that should be achieved by all phlebotomists in all settings. The role of the phlebotomist includes selecting appropriate supplies and preparing the patient for the procedure, collecting routine capillary and venous specimens for testing as requested, prepare specimen for transport, ensuring its stability, transporting specimens to the laboratory, promoting good public relations with hospital staff and patients, complying with new and revised procedures as described in the procedures manual, documenting procedures according to facility protocol, demonstrating understanding of emergency procedures, assisting in collecting and documenting monthly workload and recording data, maintaining safe working conditions, performing laboratory computer operations, participating in continuing education programs, and any other tasks assigned by supervisory personnel. This is by no means a comprehensive list of job requirements, but it will give you a brief overview of the topics that will be covered during this training. The following are common settings that may employ a phlebotomist physician offices, outpatient labs, hospitals, urgent care centers, nursing homes, wellness clinics, and insurance companies. These are not the only places that phlebotomists can work, but they are the most common employers of phlebotomists. Current trends are changing, however. Many hospitals are moving away from the traditional phlebotomist role in inpatient care. There's a move to employ workers that are more highly trained and can multitask, such as patient care technicians. Patient care technicians, or PCTs, are CNAs with additional skills in phlebotomy and EKG. These paraprofessionals are able to perform multiple tasks and simplifies the healthcare experience for the patient. It is more cost effective for the facility. The worker spends more time with the patient, which results in greater levels of observation, and patients are more comfortable with fewer workers involved in their care. Not all facilities have made this change, but many have. So what does this mean for you? 
By combining your phlebotomy certification with EKG and CNA certifications, you will become more marketable, a more valued and versatile employee, and increase your skill set to work in a variety of settings. We recommend these additional certifications if you don't already have them. It's often difficult to obtain a job in phlebotomy right out of training. Many facilities require experience. But with additional certifications, you become more attractive to employers. Plus, your starting pay is generally higher. Many different people work in laboratory settings, and each has a specific function. Some people may be cross-trained to work in various departments or perform multiple skills. The following is a partial list of the type of employees you may encounter in a lab setting. The pathologist, a physician that oversees all lab operations. This is a doctor with specialized training in pathology or the study of cells and tissues. Pathologists are legally responsible for all laboratory operations and will develop specific policies and procedures for all staff to follow to make sure that everyone is doing the same thing the same way and ensure the quality of the specimens. Managers, highly educated administrative staff members who manage the day-to-day -day operations of the lab. These managers will manage staff members, ensure compliance with policies and procedures, attend meetings, balance budgets, ensure adequate staffing, and other administrative tasks. They may or may not have advanced medical training, but they usually have advanced management education. Clinical lab scientists, CLSs, or medical technologists, MTs, hold a bachelor's degree in biological sciences. This is a four-year degree. They're usually responsible for performing the laboratory testing and operating complex diagnostic machinery. Medical lab technicians or clinical lab technicians hold an associate degree in science, which is a two-year degree. This lab professional usually prepares the specimens for tests, assists the CLS in performing the tests, and reports results to the physician. The phlebotomist, a technician who has received specialized training to collect specimens and transport them to the lab for testing. They may have on-the-job training or formal education which varies in length. They may hold a national certification through one of several certification entities, such as the National Health Career Association, NHA. Clerical staff are support personnel, often with little or no formal training, who perform various clerical functions, such as insurance verification, patient scheduling, or other clerical tasks. These tasks are often computerized. Now you know a little more about what is expected of a phlebotomist, where they work, and the staff members they work with. Now progress to Lesson 1.4 to learn about legal and regulatory aspects of laboratory sciences.